Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. This is article 252. So I just want to read it. <coughs> And it says, this is under tenure of office of auditor general. Article 252, 1. Subject to this article, the auditor general shall retire from office on attaining the age of 60 years. Not subject to this constitution not subject to any law, but subject to this article, this particular article. The Auditor General shall retire from office on attaining the age of 68. The Auditor General may retire with full benefits on attaining the age of 55. Three. The Auditor General may be removed from office on the same grounds and procedure as applies to a judge. Four, the Auditor General may resign from office by three months notice in writing to the President. This is what Article 252 says concerning the tenure of office of the Auditor General. Now, Dr. Ron Mwambo, who has been appointed Auditor General by the President, subject to ratification by the National Assembly, is 64 years of this appointment and constitution. This appointment is not supported by Article 252 of the Constitution of Zambia. Because of that one reason, I do not support the appointment of the Auditor General and the President should reverse the appointment and appoint somebody who qualifies. Other than this, even if Dr. Ron Mwamba as a person qualified, with his abilities, I would have not supported him, but the president would not have been obliged to remove him from us or to reverse the appointment. I cannot support Dr. Ron Mwamba because he is incompetent. He is extremely incompetent. That's another reason for which I could not have supported him, even if he was below 60, even 60 years old. He has demonstrated serious incompetence. Uh, this is a person who signed the 2022 uh, financial report for, from the Ministry of uh, Finance, which has serious glaring irregularities. For an auditor to sign that and call it a, a free and fair report, I find it very unfortunate. And because of that, I am unable to tender even minimal support. I can't even be human about it. I, look, I can't even be a human being about it to say something good. There is nothing good to say about Dr. Remwamba is incompetent and is over age. He, he, the appointment is unconstitutional and even if he was okay, he, would st he is still incompetent. He can't handle that office. Okay? So, let Dr. Ron Mwambwa retire and go home. <coughs> he, he was already retired, by the way. 
uh, from office where he served as deputy doctor general there. He was already retired and he went to work in, 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 in West Africa. Why, why has he been brought to that office? Why has he been brought to that office? It is in order for him to sign uh, useless reports like the one he signed which can be the example. Right now we are waiting for the Auditor General's report for 2022. Uh, the, one I'm told, the one he already signed is a financial report. Right now we are waiting for the Auditor General's report for 2022. And I can guarantee you that the contentious issues that we have been talking about will not be there in that report. They will not be there because he's incompetent. He has no capacity to plan and execute an audit to the expectations of stakeholders. I will be very surprised and I will swallow my words if the illegal audits, outcomes of those illegal audits are going to be referred to in that audit report. I will be very surprised if the presidential trips are going to be in that audit report. I will be very, very surprised if the illegal sale of shares, uh, uh, you know, ZCMN shares are going to be in that audit report. I will be very surprised if the cancellation of uh, the, the hunting uh, concessions are going to be in that audit report. I will be very surprised if the illegal purchase and distribution of fertilizer in 2021 and 2022 are going to be in that audit report. If they will be, I'll come back to you and say I was wrong. But as far as I'm concerned, there will be nothing because that auditor is incompetent. He doesn't know what it takes to be a public auditor. He thinks that being a public auditor, your role is to make government look good. He thinks that uh, being a government auditor is to be dancing to the cause of PSS. How can a PS from Northwestern province uh, call and, uh, the entire auditor general and you go running to go and solve his problems when the constitution is clear? This guy is not subject to control by any person, by any authority. The guy must plan and execute his work according to his judgment of risk. I want to manage the board even through airports. You, you are busy just uh, trying to clean up government. A, a corrupt government is what you are trying to clean up. This auditor is incompetent. Other than that, he, 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 he has already passed retirement age according to this constitution and he should forget of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable, for giving us uh, details why the appointment of uh, the new Auditor General is not supported. May I now invite Honorable Council Sanga to add his voice. Thank you, moderator. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak uh, about this important issue. There. That's why we call this presser at the time when we are supposed to be praying for fun. Um, I can't overemphasize what my colleague, uh, Honorable Mafoya, has said concerning the auditor of General's position. And I adopt everything that Mr. Mafoya has said. That is my own. One of the duties that a president who is elected has in this republic is a duty to ensure that the country is managed in accordance with the rule of law. The most important law that we've got in our country is the constitution. So if every president has a constitutional mandate to ensure that to the letter and spirit, the provisions of the constitution are complied by everybody. Everybody includes even the presidency itself. One who wants to ask a question. Why is it that the UPND government seems to have this appetite to abrogate the law when they want to achieve a means that they've set for themselves? You have heard a lot of about what uh, is happening in the government departments from one of the Papua. And you've heard why he has issues, and all of us have issues with the person who should be occupying the office of a political general. Now, this appointment, like one of the I said, is actually unconstitutional. 
when the constitution presses an age limit for somebody who should occupy the office of an auditor, you then don't have a mandate as a president, no matter how much powers you've got under the constitution, to make an appointment that is contradictory to the provision of the constitution. You know, there's, there's just everything wrong about appointing somebody who's past the age that is provided for in the constitution and according to the opportunity to go and you know, uh, occupy that office. Everything that he's going to be doing in that office is a constitution. Because in the first place, he wasn't eligible, he wasn't qualified to apply or to be considered for, for appointment in that office. I would like to make a call to the appointee, a call to the appointee himself, Mr. Mwambua. Sometimes it's important for people to express greatness by taking certain decisions that may appear disadvantaging to themselves, but for the benefit of the good of the public. You know, they are, they, Mr. Mamba is not the first person to be appointed to a position where he's not qualified. But what we expect is if you know, if you have assessed yourself, if you have examined the constitution, and if you have even looked at your personal competencies yourself, and you are accorded an opportunity to go and serve in a lofty and high and protective office like the office of an auditor general, the very best, the very best is that you don't qualify. You must sometimes raise your hands and say and to the appointing authority, sorry, find somebody else. I do not qualify. That, in my view, is an expression of greatness. You know, I have spoken before of a colleague of mine in Kenya who was appointed, you know, to head the Anti-Corruption Commission by President Mwai Kibaki when he was elected as president in 2002. The appointee was Dr. Wedi Mutunga, a constitutional lawyer and a human rights activist. At that time, he was a chair, a chair chapter for the U Human Rights Watch in Kenya. He authored a letter back to the president, explaining to the president that the appointment that the president was making was not legal. And also, he pointed out the fact that what the president was doing is what he and other people in the NGO world were trying to avoid, i.e., where the president can abuse his powers to appoint somebody who is suitable for the personal benefit of a president. Mr. Mtunga pointed out the fact that he, he was well known to the president and he didn't feel it fitting at that time to occupy the office of a director general for the Anti-Corruption Commission in Kenya. And he asked the president to develop a culture of consultation, to develop a culture of reading the authority, that you, the, the, the documents that gave them authority to make certain decisions, including appointment to a public office. He wasn't appointed, but he gained so much respect in Kenya that when President Uhuru Kenyatta became the president and offered to appoint him to an office where he was suitably qualified, the office of a chief justice, Dr. William Tunga accepted that appointment and went on to serve Kenya as a chief justice for 10 years. He transformed the judiciary to an extent where Kenya now boasts of one of the best judiciaries in the, in, in the African continent. That's what greatness means. When you don't qualify for a position, you found it obliging to try and compensate you know, Mordecai by offering him the position of attorney general. Mordecai, as odd as it is, wrote back to President Chakwera and told him, I am not available to serve in your government. The reason is simple, because I was your lawyer when you're in private practice, when you're, when, you're, when you're leading your private life. Now you've gone into public life, you don't have the mandate to pick people that fit your personal profile and give them that position. Mordecai has been revered as one of the most respected lawyers in, in Malawi, but it's because he, he, he decided to make a decision that was disadvantaging to him, but for the, for the, better, for the greater good of the Malawi Republic. So I want to make a call on uh, Dr. Mwamwa, if he's listening, and I know he's going to uh, hear this clip, that sometimes you have to demonstrate greatness by not allowing yourself to be used, to be given a position for which you're not going to serve the public in the best interest of the public. That's a call on you. I also wanted to make a, 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 a my discussion basically is supposed to be centered on the, 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 the reported you know, statement made by the Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Mumba Malida, a person that I've respected all my life in my professional life, and I continue to respect him. You know, there's a story going around where he is alleged to have made a statement that we should respect gay rights. I noticed that after 24 hours, uh, Justice Madira has tried to uh, rectify that position and say he may probably have been misquoted. And if you've seen, there was a screaming uh, opinion 
in the Post newspapers where they've actually carpeted the Chief Justice. And then they've, they've, they haven't been cause for his resignation from other sections of society. I want to make this point that uh, Mr. Malida unwittingly, or Dr. Malida actually unwittingly put into place a debate that people were just waiting for who is going to open the lead on this debate. For the longest time since the UPND government came into power, we've been toying with the issue of LGBTQ. There have been two positions on LGBTQ. The majority of Zambians have voiced their disavow on this practice. The majority of Zambians have said we don't support gay rights in this country. And it's been demonstrated for many years. The UPND, from the time they came into power, they have decided to align themselves with a minority that seems to suggest that we can have gay rights. And if you have seen, this debate has, been, has become very, a very fast debate in the nation. Very few days pass without people talking about whether we should uh, you know, accommodate gay rights or we shouldn't. So Mr. Malida didn't, maybe he didn't understand the extent to which his statement was going to be picked up by those who support gay rights and make it a high agenda item on the national dialogue. Fortunately, if you have seen, the church has come you know, um, to the rescue of the public. The church has condemned the chief justice. Of course, there are some uh, lawyers or, or, or legal practitioners or, or trained lawyers who have also voiced their support for Mr. Malida. But I can tell you that from reading what uh, Dr. Malida had said and what they themselves are saying, that two different positions. They are supporting him for something that he didn't even say. So, look, Mr. Malida has tried to clarify this position. But now we have an agenda item that we have to deal with as a nation. Because those who belong to the minority have taken this as a very important topic for discussion and they would like to invite the public now to begin to discuss it. We would like to state that we've stated before as a patriotic front that we do not support gay rights. And the position is very simple. It's because our value system does not recognize that kind of uh, lifestyle. Our law currently actually prescribes you know, uh, gayism and LGBT. Anybody who is found guilty of committing those offences will actually be subject to the proceedings and will be convicted and will serve, will serve a long jail term. And that's what Chief Justice Malida tried to explain on, 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 on the second appearance before the press. But like I said, he now has to demonstrate whether he is going to be on the side of the majority, where the Zambians are, those who don't support gay rights, or he's going to side with the minority, those who are trying to create this as our agenda for discussion. But for me, we actually have to make a very strong call as a nation. Now time has come when Zambians from all walks of life must take a stand again on, on, on this topic, whether you support it or you don't support it. But I'm convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that if this becomes an agenda for discussion in the public, we are going to say we don't support gay rights. But we need to follow the examples of other countries who have demonstrated their disapproval of gay rights. <coughs> Uganda and Ghana have passed legislation. They've actually passed law that criminalizes gay rights. The Uganda legislation is even very, very controversial because the sentences in there are very harsh. But it is all intended to show or to send a message to the public that they are not taking this thing any lightly. For us, we've been toiling with it. You can see people are parading as gays. They're doing almost everything that we prohibit under the law. We still have sodomy laws in our, in our statutes, like Mr. Marina even explained. You know, there are sodomy laws in our statutes. There are other provisions in the statute that prevent people from engaging themselves in gay rights. I have read the Constitution myself. There is nowhere in the Constitution where it says we can respect people that have got gay rights. It's not provided in there. People would like to twist what is provided for in the Bill of Rights to try and to suggest that somebody who is gay can actually come publicly and prophesy and even begin to exercise those rights. They don't exist. And like Mr. Maria, Dr. Maria says, if you engage in, in, in homosexual activities, the law will visit you. And the current law, unfortunately, does prescribe that. Rather, fortunately, it prescribes that. So we need to take a stand as Zambians and become decisive. This agenda is a global agenda. And that's why I would like to make a call for every Zambian to take an interest in things the way they are unfolding. 
they are unfolding in such a way that those who are giving us aid are trying to add to, 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 to make sure that the aid they're giving to, to us is based on our recognition of gay rights and LGBT agenda. We will stand as patriotic front to fight this agenda. We will not accept it as part of our legal system because our value system just doesn't accept such kind of activity. Yes, we must sympathize with those who are, you know, who are in that section. But sympathy doesn't mean that you have to allow them to be doing what they're doing. Sympathy means that you give them love, you take corrective measures against them, and you help them to come and get integrated into society. Any agenda that tries to recognize that they should exist and enjoy their gay rights in this country is not going to be accepted. In fact, even in countries where they come from, they're having big difficulties, or huge difficulties, you know, in trying to manage this agenda. In, in America, states are divided. There are places where you cannot exercise homosexual activities, and you, you basically risk being sent to jail. In France, they have even they, they have started a, 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 a huge fight against gayism and lesbianism. They even have declared a month within a year of Family Values Month because they've noticed just how difficult this agenda is in trying to destroy the value system of a nation. So we, this is not something we can tolerate, dear Zambians. We need to stand up to it. We need to ensure that we do what is right to protect our heritage, our legacy as a nationhood, and the sovereignty of our nation. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, Honorable Council Sanda. We will now move to bear a member of parliament, Honorable Council Temo. Thank you very much. I recognize the presence of senior members of the party, the leadership of the PF in Parliament. I also recognize my, my colleagues in the media. Now, uh, everything has been said. I'll just add on a, a few things. Um, really, the issue raised by the Chief Justice, as quoted in the media, uh, needs to be addressed adequately because we know where we stand. But suffice to say that uh, the UPND, uh, you know, I've, I've said that uh, they do not support uh, this issue of gay rights. But the UN, the Americans have said that to give you donor aid, you must recognize that. And that they've made clear. The coming in of uh, Kamara Harris in uh, Ghana, Tanzania, and Zambia was purely for that purpose. But in Zambia, because as opposition, we took a very strong stance. We preempted that, you know, they could not raise it. But we are aware that the UPND has agreed outside with the, all these people to do this. And that's why you see there are people being escorted by the police uh, and, you know, uh, campaigning for these rights and nothing happens. There are these things they call September, uh, July, Lusaka, or things like that. They're happening now. You know, we've seen it coming from the top. You know, just a person who is in charge of justice system. Yeah. Now, what I wanted to say is that I totally disagree. There's no law. There's no human rights issue. And this is the focus on it. Human rights cannot be, as, be ascribed to another country what, it, what, what they are. Only Zambians can determine what is human rights for them. America, whoever they are, whoever the, 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 you know, the neo-colonialists or the imperialists cannot come in this country and tell you that this is human rights. That's how human rights are. So, the only human rights as Zambians we need to talk about, and I would have expected the Chief Justice to talk about this, is the right to food. Because that's one of the key issues. Right now, the biggest problem Zambia needs to address is the issue of the cost of living, and in particular the cost of millimeal, which is you know what we survive on at 99% of all of us Zambians. So having said that, uh, I do not agree that you know issues of, of gays or this in, in any case is actually for me uh, I can categorize it as you know an evil act. So gays, thieves, uh, you know people and deceit, liars and so on are categorized in the same basket. And we cannot say that all oh, this so. When you're talking about if gay rights were to be there, then we should talk about, you know, uh, thieves' rights, murderers', pro murderers rights, <laughs> prostitutes' rights, those because they are in the same category. And clearly so. And uh, I would do, you know, be very comfortable, and I'm very comfortable, uh, I would be comfortable if 
the, the judiciary really came out very clean on this issue. As for the other, you know, number of uh, lawyers that are also quoted as having supported, and wrongly so, and I agree with uh, what senior counsel has already said. Having listened to the audio and as well read what he said, you know, is. He said something to that effect, but he has, you know, come and withdrawn what he said. But I do not agree that those lawyers, because the job of lawyers is to interpret the law as it is. Not to tell us, you know, what we should be and what is, is not. If anyone, and the, the biggest problem with that statement is that it may send a wrong message. Because the, the Chief Justice is the one who's being quoted. And the Chief Justice is the head of the judiciary, both as a judicial officer and also administratively. So it may send a wrong message to the judges. Yes, judges are independent, but you see, he's the head. And our fear is that, you know, this. Therefore, would call upon the judiciary to make actually this point clear, to save the image of the Chief Justice and make it very, very clear without passing around like the UPND is doing. Because the UPND, you know, will say, no, we are not supporting gay rights. Then they will say, but, you know, people can do what they you know. Honestly, if you know that you are in a Christian country, you would not do that. So finally, I just want to emphasize that law and justice does not ex exist in a vacuum. Our laws exist because we have a belief system. They reflect what we believe in. And what we believe in is that homosexuality cannot you know, be allowed in this country. And therefore, the law and those who are in charge or, you know, uh, who, who, have been, who are vested to, 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 to be in charge of the law, they should not say something which is outside what Zambians want. I thank you. I now call upon the leader of opposition to sum up the interaction for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Leader of uh, the Director of Ceremonies. I will start by acknowledging the presence of um, PF Whip in Parliament, members of Central Committee, also members of Parliament uh, with, with us this, this morning, and other members of Parliament who have joined uh, today's media interaction. As my colleagues already stated, we thought it was very important to address the media this morning. Traditionally, we do meet our media interactions on Friday. But because of the agency of certain matters that we felt needed to be addressed, we called you today and wish to thank you and acknowledge you that uh, you, uh, you know, responded quickly and came to this media interaction. I'll start by explaining our role the function that we are undertaking this morning and this is provided for in our constitution under article 2 and it reads every person has the right and duty to defend the constitution and B, resist or prevent a person from overthrowing, suspending, or illegally abrogating this constitution. So what your members of parliament are doing this morning is to defend the constitution. What we are doing this morning is to prevent His Excellency the President, President Daka Ndei Chilema, from overthrowing, suspending, or illegally abrogating this constitution and specifically under article 252 so to start with i know that um, you uh, the people from the media understand that this constitution is our supreme law and its role one of its roles its role is to discipline government. I want you to know that a constitution is there to discipline government. That is the reason why we as members of parliament who swore to defend the constitution are very quick to act whenever we feel that a person, whether it's a president or any other person, is in the process of abrogating the constitution. So the duty we have today is to ensure 
that the president does not abrogate this constitution. So when we talk about disciplining government, it's emphasized that the supreme, the supremacy of the constitution and duty of all leaders is to uphold the national, the nation's fundamentals and values. If you hear from the discussions, basically we have two main subjects today. We are talking about the comment that came from the Chief Justice on LGBTQ rights. We are also talking about the appointment of the Auditor General. So the role that we have as leaders, as political leaders, is to uphold our fundamental values and principles, which are enshrined in Article 8. And Article 9 of our Constitution is very instructive that when we are interpreting the Constitution, we shall do so in line with Article 9. You are further reminded that the preamble uh, in our constitution talks about our country being a Christian nation. So whenever interpreting constitutional provisions, there should be recourse to that preamble. There should be recourse to our national values and principles. So going forward, you find that um, the challenge most governments have the challenge unjust and in, in a, a dishonest government have, they have this unique ability to control constitutional controls and safeguards. The text is very clear in the Constitution. As regards the age, somebody must have... Uh, uh, the, the, the constitution is very clear that uh, above 60, one cannot be appointed the position of Auditor General. But in this particular case, the President has gone ahead. But maybe let's, let me invite you, let's be a bit adventurous. Let's speculate. Let's exercise the freedom to speculate. What could be the reason? What are some of the reasons why the President would want to go that way? This particular office, this constitution office, has a history. In the recent past, we know what has happened to the Auditor General's office. Dixie Chamber. Dixie Chamber has fallen victim. And Dixie Chamber was a victim because he was pursuing documents from Minister of Agriculture. He was pursuing documents from Minister of Tourism and other ministries where government has misconducted itself and the SEC they've involved themselves in corrupt activities a government that boasts to be a very clean and government and a government of angels but now time for reckoning has come what happened Dixie Chamber is now on the street and this attempt to appoint a person who does not qualify if by some chance that appointment succeeded would you think that auditor general would function professionally because he would have come to that office under some compromise and that could be one motivating factor that this appointment there is this attempt to make this appointment the moment you undermine the constitutional safeguards and watchdogs like the office of the Auditor General, it means the country is in trouble. Remember that the greatness of a nation is judged from its fidelity to the Constitution. So if we want Zambia to be great, we will judge it from government's fidelity to the Constitution. To what extent does government follow what is provided for under the Constitution? I'm sure uh, all of you, all of you saw this, that headline, it's very shocking. The president says he finds it very offensive when people treasure government processes more than the outcome. So the president is calling for compromises. The president does not like Article 252. We want to remind the president it is the law as it is not the law as it ought to be that's positive law 
it is the law as it is and not the law as it ought to be there's a reason why the framers of the law the authors of this constitution found it prudent to make those provisions under article 252 but the president is saying he's not ready to follow the law the president is irritated he finds it offensive that um, there are so many processes the president finds it offensive that there must be a professional auditor general who is going to ask questions to the permanent secretary sitting at Ministry of Agriculture. He is going to ask questions to the permanent secretary at Ministry of Tourism, asking them questions why they did, they, they did not follow procedure when cancelling tenders. The president doesn't like that. The president says he's more interested in the outcome. The president wanted those licenses to be given to his friends. So when the Auditor General says, you are wrong, Attorney General advises to say you cannot cancel those tenders. When there are audits to check on the procedures and whether the procedures are being followed, the President is upset. <coughs> One big question that I want all of you to ask. Why are our courtrooms full of people who are alleged to have abused their offices? Why are the courtrooms full then? The same president is taking the people to court because they abused their office. An abuse of office could have been out of some abridged processes. People who had President Daka and HLM's mindset in carrying out government functions are in court today. But the president is up to today encouraging people to act outside the law. He says, don't follow procedure, As just focus on the outcome. As he is doing if I want to give Isaac Insoneka a tender, a tender for fertilizer, because he's my friend, then he should be asking whether he is competent, whether he's accounts. No, I want to give it to Isaac Insoneka because he's my friend. He was covering me when I was in opposition. Is that the government that we're going to run? Remember that this constitution exists to discipline dishonest and unjust governments. This constitution exists to discipline governments such as the EPND. The authors of this constitution dissent that there will be people like President Daka and HLM. So they put measures to control them so that they can act within the confines of the law. But the president is saying he finds it offensive. We want to remind the president that um, he swore to defend the constitution. He will not govern Zambia like his private business. He's got the leverage to go and run his private businesses the way he wishes. Because even in private business, as far as I'm concerned, as a seasoned businessman myself, we put controls even in our private businesses so that there's order. But President Adaka in Ichilema finds it offensive that there are government processes, that government is meant to follow procedure. He's not interested in those procedures. But seated here with my colleagues, we are not surprised. Are you also not surprised that from the time the UPND came into power, their preferred mode of procurement is single sourcing? Everything is single sourced. And by a lousy coincidence, this single sourcing always goes lands on his friends. Very lucky, isn't it? Most of this procurement somehow finds itself in the hands of his friends. So we have a president in State House who is not ready to follow the law. We have a president in a state house who is not ready to follow procedure. That is the reason why for us as your representatives, we will stand with the Zambian people to ensure that national resources are protected, to ensure that the law is followed, whether it's in appointments, whether it's in procurement, and to continue to provide those uh, checks and balances. It's also sad that because of what President Aka Indichle must say in the paper today, we now confirm our earlier suspicions that most of government institutions have been compromised. They've been compromised. Uh, we want a uh, compromised Auditor General. We would want a compromised Public Accounts Committee. 
and many other committees so that uh, President Daka Inde Ichilema's actions are not questioned. Very, very sad indeed. So, as per Article 2 of our Constitution, we want to call upon each and every Zambian to stand up and defend this Constitution, to defend the provisions of this uh, a Constitution. Because if we don't, President Daka Inde Ichilema is very clear on how he would want to run this government. He would want to wake up one morning and just make decrees. Whatever he decrees is what goes. That's not how governments are run. It's a very dangerous way to uh, govern, and uh, we want to make this call to President Daka in the Ichilema. He must understand that um, the, this constitution is supreme. Our constitution is supreme. It's above everyone, including himself. It's not that we're asking for a favor for him to follow the constitution. He has no choice but to follow what is provided for under our constitution. So, like my colleagues have uh, uh, said, the issue of LGBTQ is something that we've been romancing around. We are toying with every day. Um, countries such as Ghana, countries such as uh, Uganda, and other countries in the region are very decisive. They've come out very strongly. We've had very weak statements coming from government. For me and my colleagues seated here, we don't take it to be a coincidence that now you have advertisement, job opportunities. One of the um, uh, you know, qualifications, or one of the conditions they're asking for is for you to disclose your sex orientation. Are you sure it's a coincidence that the Chief Justice said what he said? And what we see in the media going round is that people are now asking you your sex orientation. It's not a coincidence. He's trying to debunk the myth around LGBTQ in our culture. It won't be very long from now. There is some shrouded process attempting to amend the constitution through the back door. I'm very sure that some of the one of the motivations is someone trying to sneak in the issue men and women wake up something is happening we have called upon the minister of justice come to parliament and give us a roadmap for amending the constitution he is not acting we have called upon the minister of justice bring a bill to enact the process of enacting the constitution we, the memories on the failed bill 10 are still fresh. The comments and statements that came from the UPND are very fresh. The UPND were very categorical. They were very clear that they were not participating in the constitutional amendment process under bill 10 because the consultation was not wide enough. <coughs> so what we are saying to them is that um, for the next constitutional amendment process, we want the threshold for the consultative process to be higher than the one that was employed under uh, Bill 10. We had many processes of consultation before the National Dialogue Forum met to craft a bill that came to Parliament. The UPND still felt that was not wide enough. So I want to encourage my brother, a fellow council, State Council uh, Mulambo Aimbe, to start the process a long process of consultation. I'm speaking as an authority because I'm a constitutional lawyer. To say, start by doing civic education, educate the citizens generally about the importance of a constitution and uh, the basic structure of a constitution, what should be in the constitution. And then we uh, begin consultation. We begin to garner consensus. And the consensus that will be demanded in this particular case we will not be a bipartisan consensus where two parties, UPND and PF, meet and agree and to say we have consulted widely. No, it will not be an elite consensus where professors and a couple of doctors from universities sit in one conference hall and have <coughs> coffee and they say they have consulted. No. What is required is general consensus. 
So what we demand is general consensus in this process. And that's the only time that um, the threshold that was demanded by the UPND will be achieved. So it's a call on the UPND and at the same time a warning that even during that consultative process, we will remain very alert. We are now very suspicious that uh, there may be an attempt to sneak in a clause in the constitution amendment process to provide for LGBTQ. We will remain alert to ensure that should that uh, come, we will quickly alert members of the public so that that particular clause does not go. So it's a warning that uh, with what is happening now, especially with the uh, statements that uh, is attributed to the Chief Justice, Zambians are now called upon to remain extra alert on the subject of LGBTQ. But at the same time, we want to call upon the government to emulate the government of Uganda, the government of Ghana. I think Kenya has done the same thing. There's some conversation going on right now in Zimbabwe and many other countries in the region. We are the only country that is kicking the can when it comes to LGBTQ. And like uh, Comrade Sanga said, uh, we will not sit back, uh, you know, because we want some aid. We are not ready to compromise our values and principles in exchange for aid. President Edgar Chagualungu made it very clear. He says, leave us with our poverty. We will keep our values and principles in poverty. We will not compromise just because we are hungry. And I think that is the mind of an average Zambian. So for those that are going out there to access aid and promising to introduce LGBTQ, I want to, uh, the, I want to uh, promise you that we have Zambians, including members of parliament, who are ready to take on that fight. I thought that was uh, very important. Uh, Comrade Sanga was just showing me there is this advert. It's an advert, uh, rural, rural Education Authority uh, is an equal opportunity employer, and everyone, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, marital status, sexual orientation. That is very strange. Yeah. But it's not a coincidence. Don't take it as a mere coincidence that there was a statement by the Chief Justice, and then you have an advert coming out like that. Let's frown upon such statements and condemn them. So we want to call upon RIA. Uh, RIA management, can you immediately amend that advertisement? It doesn't sit well with us. Management of RIA immediately withdraw that advert, amend it, and uh, uh, you know, publish an advert that is befitting. We will not allow you to go, uh, you know, scot free, uh, putting up such adverts in our public media. Why should you talk about someone disclosing their sex, uh, sex orientation? We frown upon such statements. Ria immediately withdraw this advert, amend it before you can publish it again. Ladies and gentlemen, with those few remarks, I wish to thank you most sincerely for your time. Thank you so much, Leader of uh, Opposition. We are almost concluding. I'll now ask uh, colleagues uh, from the media if you have any questions, clarifications, comments. This is your time. Any questions, comments, observations? There's nothing. Well, thank you so much for coming and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Yeah, just one small addition um, uh, now, uh, taking advantage that uh, there was no question. Uh, I have seen a number of my colleagues from the media are, are those who like to keep fit. And uh, some of them have supported them, you know, jogging with the former president. Uh, president Edgar Chagualungu is a Zambian citizen who enjoys his full rights. Freedom of movement, freedom of association, so it's uh, indeed a joke that somebody thinks this, the mass marshal is jogging activity. They must now provide police to escort him to jog. President Daka Indeichilema is a free citizen who can decide to jog anytime, anywhere, as he wishes. For those of you that have taken time to join him, 
please continue joining him for, for jogging. There is no offense that he commits by jogging. And there is, no, there is nothing wrong by those citizens that appreciate what, what he did when he was in government as they join him for jogging. A number of Zambians find solace because they are remembering this man as a man that built a close to a thousand health facilities right across the country. When they see him jogging, they join him. When they see President Edgar Chagwalungu jogging, they want to join him because he built so many schools where our friends have now come uh, you know, to introduce free education. So they want to appreciate him. Can't jog without it. I've seen a number of our foreigners joining him when he's jogging because they appreciate facilities such as the airports and the road infrastructure and the communication right across the Sausage Airport. Yes, I've seen colleagues coming from Mulungushi Conference Center to go and join him jogging because of the facilities that he has brought about. So it's, a, it's, it's mere appreciation of what President Edgar Chagwalungu did. Right now as we speak, I'm receiving messages from Chilubi, from the swamps, because of the communication towers that were taken there. People are communicating from Chilubi right now as I speak to you. So when a person, from a, a trader from Chilubi, you know, uh, from Honorable Fubes constituency, coming to, to, to do some business, and he has a, a, a free day, they find it necessary to go and jog with President Edgar Chagwalungu, appreciating what, um, what he did. So, to our government, and especially the, the, the IG, uh, you know, the IG, the Inspector General of Police, is worrying all of us. Huh? He's worrying all of us, and uh, really, we, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do with the IG. He's our older brother, he's elderly, and you don't really know what to do with, with, with you know. Yeah. So we, 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 we have difficulties with the, with the IG. <laughs> so we had a chat with colleagues, well, what do we do with the IG? You know, we don't know what to do with the IG. Yeah. So I think I'll leave it there. You know, I, I, I pray for you. We're a Christian nation. So sometimes, uh, you know, as they say, we will do our best. God will do the rest. So I think for the IG where we are, I would want to, to invite everyone. You know, let's find time in our closet. We go down on our knees to pray for, 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 for the IG. I think he needs help. Um, he needs help. I know that uh, I was listening to a radio yesterday. Somebody was saying that um, he comes from a regime when it was a police force. And his training, uh, you know, they trained them to intimidate and beat citizens. That was the training. And he worked under that regime for a very long time. He may be finding it difficult, you know, to, to realign and realize now this is a police service uh, promoting human rights as it were. So as we, you know, uh, talk to him about human rights, let's also remember him in prayers. Thank you very much. Thank you. With all that said, thank you so much, uh, Leader of Opposition and Members of Parliament, colleagues. Thank you once more. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.